Welcome to It's Your Ego, Stupid, a show lovingly intended for millions of spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people like you who may at times be led into ego stupidity, a lesser version of yourself and a lesser version of life. This show will give you a much deeper understanding of what ego is, what it's doing to your life, how it can weaken your human and spiritual wellness, and how you can heal in each of these areas if needed. It's Your Ego, Stupid will heighten your awareness of the intense link between your ego and spirit, your humanity and divinity, and the synergy that can lead to the best version of you and your life. Your host is Dr. Nick Martin a licensed psychologist who has worked in the clinical, university, school, and private practice settings over the past 40 years, while serving as a therapist, diagnostician, educator, and consultant. Welcome again to It's Your Ego, Stupid, and now your host, Dr. Nick Martin. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Nick Martin, also known by some as Ego Man, due to my intense focus on ego and how it's impacting our lives both humanly and spiritually. I want to thank you for listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. I hope you've had a great week as you go about beating the many important challenges that we all face, which during today's show will have us looking at how higher ego power contributes to difficulty in managing the various kinds of adversity we are all called on to manage in our life. These are the inevitable failures, losses, and mistakes that we can make due to the imperfection of our humanity. One of the broader lessons I've learned from you is how important it is to handle these things so that one can do a lot more winning in life rather than losing. Losers never seem to learn from their mistakes. People whose ego energy is imbalanced, whether it's power, flexibility, or vulnerability related are often doing a lot more losing than winning. And a lot of the time, they don't even realize that this is happening, particularly in relationships, until it's too late. Their ego energy has disguised what is actually taking place to lose or fail at work, in relationships, in social settings, at tasks, in their health, in general, at life. Speaking for myself, I have thankfully been successful within the academic, professional, financial, marital, familial, sports, and health-related aspects of my life. But that success has been heavily influenced by my willingness to recognize and learn from my mistakes sooner rather than later. Unfortunately, those with higher ego power, the focus of today's program, often approach these happenings as an attempt to disempower or weaken them. When they make mistakes or fail at something, be it a task or a relationship, or lose at something, they often react as if the occurrence is a threat to their power and control. The last person they look at is themselves because their overly inflated sense of empowerment leads them to explain these happenings as having something to do with someone else's or something else's weaknesses. This is not an easy person to be in a relationship with, because when things go wrong, it's usually never their fault. So they never learn what they need to learn, or learn it too late in order to make things better. But before we go more deeply into that focus, I want to mention that It's Your Ego Stupid is a program for spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people, just like you and me, who may at times be led by our ego into something I call ego stupidity, a lesser version of ourselves and a lesser version of life. Ego stupidity rooted in ego energy affecting relationships with our family, friends, and co-workers, which could stand some improvement, maybe a lot of improvement. Ego stupidity rooted in ego energy impacting our efforts to achieve, to use our potential, to recognize the service in what we are doing, 
and to experience a sense of meaning connected to our life's work. Ego stupidity affecting our ability to do effectively with all of the changes. Adversity, which is the focus of today's program. Stressors and conflicts taking place in our life. Ego stupidity making it difficult to grow our mind with truth while keeping us stuck in faulty beliefs, values, attitudes, and prejudices with many acquired nowadays from unfiltered social media, fake news on the internet, and opinion news on TV, masquerading as truth, and often suggesting that truth doesn't really matter anymore. Ego stupidity can be making it difficult to feel genuine, lasting happiness, while often leading us into unnecessary anxiety, anger, guilt, sadness, or fake happiness being substituted for the real thing. And finally, ego stupidity impacting our spiritual wellness and ability to be the love, life, and energy God is in our daily thoughts, words, and deeds. As you can see, there are lots of important places that ego stupidity can make its appearance in our lives, the source of which is the nature of our ego energy. If things aren't going as well as you'd like in any of these areas, you've come to the right place because a lot of what's going wrong has nothing to do with our intelligence or the absence of spirituality or the presence of mental instability and has a lot more to do with our ego energy, which is serving as the fuel for ego stupidity. Your lives, relationships, and experiences have taught me all of that over the past 40 years. And what I'm sharing with you in my website, books, and shows about ego energy and ego stupidity, and how we can heal it with ego medicine when and where needed. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. During our show today, we're going to be taking a look at the impact that higher ego power has on the way a person deals, or more accurately, fails to deal with the inevitable failures, losses, or mistakes, large or small, that happen in their life. And as a quick review, people with higher ego power are heavily into having power, control, or influence over what's taking place in their life. They can be the dictator, the rebel, bully, or narcissist that I talk about in my book, The Two Voices Within. These are people who can fail to own even the smallest of contributions they make to problems. It's never their fault. This points to how sensitized they can be to even the smallest of intrusions on their intense sense of empowerment, which I refer to as over-empowerment. That even the smallest hint of weakness serves to activate their defenses that leads to their pointing the finger elsewhere when others can see the responsibility, at least some of it falls upon them. They are experts at playing the blame game because it has become a heavily instilled means of operating in the face of adversity. And apologies are something they are not very good at because these make them feel so weak. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Millions of people do experience these difficulties because there are billions of people on the planet and every one of them has an ego, just like you and me. Again, some of these people are living in roles I talk about in the two voices within, such as the dictator, the ultra competitor, and the bully. I want you to take a look to see if you or a loved one is experiencing any of the symptoms, ego stupidity, and ego impact on spiritual wellness I'll be talking about today. 
I want you to diagnose you because you're the only one living you 24 seven. Now we're going to take a look at some of the symptoms that indicate if a higher ego power voice is talking to and through you in your life. And here's the first symptom. You have difficulty accepting your failures, losses, and mistakes. Again, you have difficulty accepting your failures, losses, and mistakes. People with higher ego power have difficulty taking their share of responsibility when these happen. They have trouble taking responsibility for failures when they occur or losses that may occur or mistakes that they may make. And here are some questions for you to consider when you think about this symptom. Do you readily look to blame other people or things when these kinds of things happen, failures or losses or mistakes that happen in your life? Are you reacting as if it is never your fault? People with higher ego power often look upon these experiences as something that's never their fault. Also, do you have trouble making a full apology? People with higher ego power often experience apologies as a form of disempowerment, as a weakening or being weakened when they make them. So a full apology is one where you're pointing to and you're owning completely what you need to own. The word but doesn't appear in your apology. It's you taking full responsibility for whatever it is that you need to be responsible for. Also, do you readily attack others and maybe try to make them or look like they're more responsible for you, uh, what's happened. That's another technique the person with higher ego power often resorts to, looking to make others responsible rather than themselves as a way of lessening the feeling of weakness or disempowerment that they may encounter as a result. And one more question on do you try to minimize your role in the problem when compared to others? You get into this comparative thought process where you try to make somebody else, the other person or persons involved in the situation, more responsible. That it's a well-established uh, technique in a way that you, you resort to. So when you think of these questions and the symptoms, does any of this sound familiar to you? I'm going to go on to the next symptom. You beat yourself up for having failed or made mistakes when the evidence points directly to you and you can't escape it. You beat yourself up. You attack yourself for the failure or the mistake when there's no escaping the reality that you're the person that was responsible. Uh, people with higher ego power can get very angry with themselves as a result of uh, these situations where no one else is plausibly uh, linked to whatever happened. Uh, it's as if they get so mad at themselves for having made the mistake that they should not have made. Here are some questions for you to consider. Do you attack yourself verbally? People with higher ego power may attack themselves uh, for having made the mistake, for encountering the loss, or for having failed. And it doesn't have to be a public sort of uh, reprimand, but often it's very private, but still it takes place. Also, do you engage in relentless name calling of yourself? Again, calling yourself stupid or dumb or whatever word you might use. Something that may be done privately, if not publicly. Also, do you question yourself is in how could I have been so stupid? Okay, how could I have been so stupid? And also, do you have trouble letting go of the mistake? Letting go of it, getting over it, moving beyond it, learning from it. Again, people with higher ego power can be stuck because it was such a challenge to the intense sense of empowerment they want to experience and hold on to that it was a reflection of the fact that they don't have nearly as much power uh, that they thought they had. 
And these are the kind of things that, when they happen more often, point in the direction of higher ego power being at work when dealing with adversity. So when you think of these questions and the symptom, does any of this sound familiar to you? I'm going to talk about one more symptom before we go to our first break. And that is that you have trouble being the bigger person by making the first move in solving problems where others will need to do their part as well. So this is a, a situation where, yes, there is a need for shared ownership of what happened. But for people with higher ego power, they often interpret making the first move as a sign of weakness. And they often interpret the, making the first move as if it were an admission of greater responsibility. And that is something they desperately want to avoid taking place. So they don't make the first move. They wait for others to make that first move. And here are some additional questions to think about. Do you focus more on what they have to do? People with higher ego power are very uh, very heavily invested in looking what at other people need to do if there's been a problem, a mistake, or a loss that's occurred, rather than what they have to do. So do you have trouble focusing on what you have to do? Also, do you, I call it, keep score, meaning that you keep track of how much you're doing and how much they're doing uh, in a situation. And it's important for you not to do more than what you think they should be doing. Because if you are doing more, then you begin to think of that as a, a weakening, as an ownership of greater responsibility. And that's something that people with higher ego power are very sensitized to happening. And also, do you have trouble being the first one to apologize? This is an area for uh, a great difficulty for people with higher ego power. The, being the first one to apologize is interpreted by them as an admission that they have greater responsibility. So when you think of these questions and the symptom, does any of this sound familiar to you? We're coming up on our first break. When we return, we'll start to look at reflections of ego stupidity connected to people with higher ego power and their difficulties in managing adversity. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. And I'll see you after the break. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Hi, Dr. Nick Martin here. I want to invite you to visit my website, egoandspirit.info, where you can find lots of information on ego and download your free ebook copy of It's Your Ego Stupid, Fix It to Fix Your Life. Also, please visit the shop page where you can find each of my other books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, and The Two Voices Within. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. 
a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at reflections of ego stupidity and when it's happening in a higher ego power person's difficulties in dealing with adversity. Some of these may seem odd or strange or weird, maybe funny or inappropriate, but that's because you may not be living in that energy. But for those with higher ego power, it's often leading them into engage an ego rooted, non reality based, truth disconnected thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, affecting their ability to work with their failures, losses, and mistakes, due in part to the intense sense of empowerment, over empowerment that is, that they often experience. And it often leads them to conclude that the abnormal things that they think or feel or do are normal when confronted with adversity. And like the symptoms, they can become their abnormal normal that they don't realize they're caught up in. But others often can because they're not looking at them through the same ego energy prism that the higher ego power person is looking through to see what's taking place in dealing with adversity. And these are people that are intelligent, spiritual, imperfect, and mentally stable but they've gotten caught up in the web of an abnormal world of their own making due to their unhealthy, imbalanced, higher ego power energy. And they can remain stuck there until they heal the energy, leading them to the symptoms and ego stupidity that's taking place. And the way they can go about doing this is with the use of ego medicine that consists of three things. The first of which is understanding and coming to know what ego is and what it isn't. Coming to understand that your ego is actually an energy at work in your life in an effort to help you to stay alive. Sort of like what the brain is trying to do and the heart is trying to do, but this is on a psychological level. So it's working to try to help you to survive. It's your survival energy. And also understanding what it's not, including some of the myths that I've talked about in previous shows, including that your ego has an intellect, meaning that it has an awareness of what it is. And it doesn't because it doesn't have the capacity to think. You do the thinking based upon the energy flowing into your mind or ego mind. And it doesn't have an intentional quality Though it has a purpose to keep you alive, it doesn't have an intentional quality, which is to uh, lead you in a certain direction uh, in what you're doing in your life. That's up to you. So that's the first uh, aspect of ego uh, medicine, which is to understand what ego is and isn't. Our next one, the next second component or contributor, is tuning into one's ego energy. You tuning into your ego energy which more specifically means coming to know the amount or volume of ego power and ego flexibility and ego vulnerability that are comprising your ego energy. Now, this is something that you cannot do by yourself because you're not familiar with any of that, but you can learn to do that across my website, my books, and these podcasts to get a better handle or understanding of your ego energy and knowing where you're at and what you need to do about it, if anything. And then the last contributor to ego medicine is being able to replace ego-rooted, non-reality-based, truth-disconnected thoughts and beliefs that we created. Ego did not create them. We did, building upon the energy flowing into our mind or our ego mind. And we replace them with thoughts with those that are connected to truth and reality, both human and divine. And our program, the rest of today's program or the next part of our today's today's program is going to deal with this third contributor, which involves looking at reflections of ego stupidity for the disconnection from reality. These are the kinds of inaccurate, illogical, 
or irrational thoughts that people with higher ego power can bring into their efforts to work with the problems often of their own making. And here's the first one. Failure is not an option. People with higher ego power have difficulty giving themselves permission to fail. So they get caught up in this thought, which is a non-reality based thought because failure is an option owing to the nature of our imperfect humanity. So, but telling yourself that it's not an option is a non-reality based thought, which is going to affect how you work with failures, losses, and mistakes. And this is ego stupidity that can feed into additional ego stupidity, additional irrational, illogical thoughts that begin to happen that include, I'm not allowed to fail. I'm not allowed to fail becomes part of your thinking process and how you approach uh, these kinds of things that can happen in your life. That's a non-reality based thought. You are permitted to fail. Also, people will see my failure as a sign of weakness or even worse, helplessness. People with higher ego power begin to think about how others are going to react in the face of their failures or losses or mistakes and how they're going to look down on them or negatively at them, seeing them as being weaker than they want them to see them or even helpless. Another non-reality based thought that often happens is I have nothing to learn. People with higher ego power, I mentioned this at the very beginning of the show, uh, end up losing a lot because they don't learn from their mistakes or their failures or their losses much, if anything. So that's a non-reality based thought because we all have that need. And also another uh, non-reality based thought, ego reflective of ego stupidity is that no one can teach me how to do better. People with higher ego power often are very poor students of life and they don't listen very well to others who may be useful to them in learning how to do better and to succeed. So when your higher ego power is healing, you begin to realize that failure is not the weakness or disempowerment that you've been making it out to be. But until then, when you're thinking that failure is not an option and all of the rest, that's your ego making you stupid. Now we're going to go on to another reflection of ego stupidity, which is that when things go wrong, someone else is to blame. I mentioned this earlier, how good people with higher ego power are at blaming others. So when things go wrong, that thought, someone else is to blame. People with higher ego power often get caught up in blaming others in order to hold on to power. If I can blame you for what I did that was wrong, then I don't feel as weak as I would feel if I admitted it. And this is ego stupidity that feeds into additional ego stupidity that also begins to happen, which is that I can't be the first person, I can't be the person who is responsible for failure. Again, a non-reality based thought. I can't own failure or losses or mistakes. Again, that's a non-reality based thought that people that are intelligent, spiritual, and not mentally ill often think when they're dealing with this kind of energy. Or... Another thought is that I'm too intelligent or capable to fail. People with higher ego power often walk around with an inflated sense of themselves. And that includes how smart they are or how attractive they are or how capable they are. And so thinking that is incompatible with failure, losses, or mistakes on their part. So that's a non-reality based Uh, thought reflective of ego stupidity. And one more, failure means you're stupid. Failure means you're stupid. People with higher ego power often interpret that occurrence as somehow connected to something wrong with your intelligence, your intellect, your capacity to think, uh, and they look at failure in that light. And that's, again, a non-reality based thought. Now, all that really means, the not reality-based thought, is that failure means you're human. But until you know that, you're functioning with that ego stupidity. So when your higher ego power 
is healing, you realize that blaming others is often a strategy to mask one's own weakness and issues with over-empowerment. But until then, when you're thinking that when things go wrong, someone else to blame, that is your ego making you stupid. I've got one more reflection of ego stupidity, which is that making the first move to apologize is a sign of weakness. Again, making the first move to apologize is a sign of weakness. People with higher ego power experience apologizing as very disempowering. And this is ego stupidity that feeds into additional ego stupidity that also begins to happen, which includes the notion that the person who makes the first move, meaning to apologize, is more responsible for the problem. Again, a non-reality-based thought, because often the first person isn't the post person most responsible. But that's how the higher ego power person interprets it. So that stops them from apologizing when they need to. And also, another thought, if they don't apologize, I can't apologize. If they don't apologize, I can't apologize. Again, a non-reality-based thought. Of course we can apologize. Also, I will need a guarantee of their apology before I can apologize. People with higher ego power feel the need to have the other person uh, guarantee that they're going to own something before they, they themselves can. And some more thoughts. If they apologize and I don't, if they apologize and I don't, I win. And then on the opposite of that, if I apologize and they don't, they win. So get into this game playing that starts to take place uh, about this. And a lot of stupidity, as people often know, taking place. When your higher ego power is healing, uh, you realize that the first person to apologize is often the bigger and stronger person, and apologizing is often a sign of strength, not weakness. But until then, when you're thinking that and all of the rest, well, that's your ego making you stupid. Now we're going to shift over to talking a little bit about ego insights. I want to share some specific ego insights connected to the symptoms and the ego stupidity I've been talking about. These are insights that can help you to better see what's going on behind the scenes and beneath the surface when it comes to difficulty in dealing with adversity. These are insights intended to help you see more of your ego blindness if you or someone you know has higher ego power and what ego is actually doing when it comes to difficulties. And here's the first one. Your higher ego power voice or energy is leading you to see failures and losses and mistakes as a violation of your control and signs of weakness. Again, your higher ego power energy is leading you to see failures, losses, and mistakes as a violation of your control and signs of weakness. So your higher ego power is leading you to interpret them, meaning losses and mistakes and failings, as challenges to the intense need for control you need to have over yourself, others, and life. And it's leading you to interpret them as experiences to be avoided at all costs. At all costs, they need to be avoided. This energy is tracking you in that direction. Also, it's leading you to need to blame others. This energy, this higher ego power energy, is leading you to need to blame others when these things happen, the adversity happens, in order to maintain your over-empowerment. So when you awaken and are more conscious of your higher ego power, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. Okay, next we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the next insight, which is that your higher ego power energy is damning, damaging your relationships when you fail to share responsibility for the failures, the losses, and the mistakes taking place inside the relationship. It's leading you to slowly but surely damage 
and create distance in the relationship. It's sort of like an insidious weed that's growing inside the relationship when you have difficulty owning your share of responsibility. It's hurting the relationship sometimes in ways that you don't even realize. Also, it's leading to your becoming psychologically unsafe to people that you share relationships with, particularly family and friends. You're kind of a threatening person in the sense that you keep distance from your own failures and losses and mistakes. And people find that difficult to be near, to be around. Uh, it's also leading to your cultivating a sense that failures, losses, and mistakes are not okay, including those that may, they may be making or in a subtle kind of way saying it's not okay for them to take place. In a way, you're saying it's not okay for them to be human. That may not be your intention, but that's what's coming through in the experiences with you from them when it deals with things like adversity. And also, it's leading to your cultivating a sense that failures, losses, and mistakes are reflective of weakness and stupidity. This often gets exaggerated in, uh, in your world and affects other people, that, it's, that they are much more intensive manifestations of our weakness and stupidity that makes it difficult to deal with in a relationship. So when you awaken and are more conscious of your higher ego power, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. We're going to talk about one more insight before we go to our second break. Your higher ego power energy is making it difficult for you to learn what must be learned from the failures, losses, and mistakes that you contribute to. As I said earlier, you, you're not a good learner. You don't want to listen to people because each learning is disempowering and listening to other people uh, trying to help you is disempowering. So you don't do that very well. So it's, it's leading you to form an unhealthy association between learning from others and feeling disempowered. You feel disempowered if you are learning from other people or being put in that position. So this would be particularly difficult in the relationship you may have with those closest to you, be they your husband, wife, or spouse, maybe your children. Also, this is leading to into a blaming habit, which is making it difficult for you to look inside. You are not good at looking inside of yourself. You're looking out to find the answers to what went wrong, how it went wrong, where it went wrong, and who else needs to do something. And it's also leading you uh, to look at what others must do to fix things. Again, it's their responsibility more so than your own to take care of things. When you awaken and are more conscious of your higher ego power, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. We are coming up on our second break. When we return, we'll be looking at ego's impact on our spiritual wellness. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. And I'll see you after the break. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. 
Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at how higher ego power can impact our spiritual wellness when it comes to dealing with adversity. We'll be looking at ego's impact on the connection to the divinity within our humanity, the God within each of our being which is one of the divine gifts that we've all been given. The lessening of our spiritual wellness involves gaining distance from being the love, the life, and the energy God is within our thoughts, words, and deeds. When ego is getting in the way of working with the failures, losses, and mistakes taking place in our life. Each of these can be undermining our spiritual wellness by distancing us from God the God within us, our divinity. Here are a few examples of ego's impact on spiritual wellness for those with higher ego power who are failing to be their divinity when confronted with adversity. And we'll get started with ego's impact on being the love God is when dealing with adversity. People with higher ego power have difficulty being spiritually well when needs to be overly empowered, weaken their efforts to manage failure, loss, and mistakes with unconditional, connective, unburdened, and unlimited love. Your divinity involves being healthily empowered in order to manage the inevitable adversity. Again, those failures, losses, and mistakes that are taking place within you as well as around you in others and the world. When your higher power and intense needs for power and control prevents you from lovingly working with all of the adversity that life will bring forth, you're not being the unconditional love God is in managing these important life challenges. We must bring unconditional love to our efforts to manage failures, losses, and mistakes. The incredible power of your divinity can then come forth through your humanity. When your higher power and intense needs for power and control weakens meeting and embracing life's adversities with love, rather than anger, denial, rejection, and blame, you're not able to be the connective love God is. We must be lovingly connected to our failures, losses, and mistakes in order to meet them with the incredible empowerment of our divinity. When your higher power and intense needs for power and control are burdening you with the absence of love in working with your failings, you're not able to be the unburdened love God is. We must know and accept our failings in order to bring freely flowing love to our efforts to work with them. And when your higher power and intense needs for power and control are limiting the availability of love in working to understand and manage your failures, losses, and mistakes, you're not able to be the unlimited love God is. The embrace of our failings will bring forth an unlimited love to our efforts to manage and heal them. But when ego is getting in the way of all of this happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity. God loves your humanity, and you should too. Next, we'll take a look at ego's impact 
on being the life God is when dealing with adversity. People with higher ego power have difficulty being spiritually well when intense needs for power and control are leading them to dishonor and disrespect their failures, losses, and mistakes with denial, rejection, and blame. Your divinity involves welcoming, honoring, and respecting them so that you can work with and heal what has been brought forth by them. When your higher power and intense needs for power and control are leading you to dishonor and disrespect the need to work with life's adversities, you're not being the life God is in this failing. The embrace of your failures, losses, and mistakes will bring you to work with honor and respect in learning from them and healing what must be healed. When your higher power and intense needs for power and control are leading you to dishonor and disrespect the adversities taking place in those surrounding you, you're not being the life God is. The embrace of their failures, losses, and mistakes will allow you to honor and respect their challenges and what you can do to support them and receive the healing they must come to know. When your higher power and over-empowerment are leading you to dishonor and res disrespect yourself when encountering failures or losses or mistakes, you're not being the life God is. The embrace of them will allow you to honor and respect the opportunities you have to learn from them and heal what must be healed. God does not want you to reject yourself, nor should you. And also, when your higher power and over-empowerment are leading you to dishonor, and to disrespect the need for ownership and apology for your failings. You're not being the life God is. The embrace of opportunities for ownership and apology reflects honor and respect for that which must be learned and healed. But when ego is getting in the way of all of this happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality are less spiritually well and failing to be your divinity in which any adversity, failure, loss, or mistake can be managed and healed. Last, we're going to take a look at being the energy God is and ego's impact on it when dealing with adversity. This involves being able to access healing and transformative energy designed into your being to naturally occur when you're connected to human and divine truth. This is a capacity that's three million years in the making, just as all the wondrous things that you and I have been endowed with due to the wisdom of the ages and evolution. This is a capacity that's rooted in our common source be it known by you as God, Allah, Yahweh, Vishnu, Great Spirit, Source, or another that I fail to mention. People with higher ego power have difficulty being spiritually well when failing to manage adversity within the light of truth and understanding that can be found when they are not being blinded by intense needs for power and control over what is taking place in their life. Your divinity involves healing and transformation in which you are willing to work with and manage failings by seeking the truth and understanding that can be found when it is not being obscured by intense needs for power and control. It involves healing and transformation in which you are taking responsibility for seeking truth and understanding about your failures, 
losses and mistakes that is unencumbered by needs for power and control. When higher ego power and over empowerment is keeping you from knowing truth and understanding about why adversity is and has happened in your life, you're not being the energy God is in working with it. The lessening of your over empowerment will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of your failings and any healing that is needed. When higher ego power and over empowerment is keeping you from knowing truth and understanding about why adversity has happened to others. You're not being the energy God is. The lessening of your over empowerment will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of their failings and any healing that you can offer to them. When higher ego power and over empowerment is keeping you from knowing truth and understanding about the need for ownership, responsibility, and apology on your part, you're not being the energy God is. The lessening of your over empowerment will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of the need to take responsibility and offer apology when needed. But when ego is getting in the way of all of this happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity. As we leave our focus on ego's impact on our spiritual wellness, please know that we often make God and our connection to God and others so much harder than it has to be. And this is what happens when unhealthy ego energy is getting in between us. God and life and we become so much better and so much easier when we remove that obstacle with ego medicine. As we leave our focus on higher ego power and difficulty working with adversity in one's life, give some thought to the symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact I've shared with you today. I hope what I've shared with you today will serve as a dose of ego medicine. And if any of it resonates with you, please help me to share it with others. I want to mention before leaving that you can purchase each of my books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, The Two Voices Within, and It's Your Ego Stupid at the online bookstores for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Balboa Press. I end today's show with this message. The great news is that working to heal your ego energy using ego medicine, by growing your awareness of its symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact will allow the divine truth in your being to flow and to shine through you and allow you to fully embrace each of the divine gifts. The spiritual part of healing is a given. It's part of your endowment. Divine truth and the divine gifts are part of your heritage that already exists within you. You need do nothing more to be spiritual you already are. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You only need to enhance your humanity with ego medicine so that all which is available to you is given. Fix your ego to fix your life humanly and spiritually. I want to thank you for listening and allowing me to be your servant. Please have a great week and do come back to my next program. In peace and love, this is Dr. Nick saying goodbye for now.